this is Captain Chaudhary. In my last lecture, I talked about what is moment of inertia. Now, I would like to relate moment of inertia to BM transverse, BM longitudinal and center of pressure with a very simple application. The idea is a person who is doing these calculations should not be endlessly doing these calculations without understanding what he is doing. So, the idea is he tries to visualize the relationship between moment of inertia the BM transverse, BM longitudinal and center of pressure. Like, let's talk about BM transverse. If this is a box vessel floating at a certain draft B and if you look at the water plane area, that means this is the plan view. What I've done is I've kind of uh, cut the vessel uh, along the, I've cut the vessel along the water line and I'm seeing from top. So this is the water plane area. Now the vessel rolls about this axis. When I look from stern, the same vessel appears like this. This is the water line and this is the center line axis which I have shown over here. The vessel rolls about this axis, right? So can I say this water plane area is kind of performing the rotatory motion about this axis, right? So if you see in a view from stern, you will find that these wedges are going up and down with the axis are stationary at water level as if the entire ship is performing a rotatory motion about this axis which is passing through the center of rotation. This is the rotatory motion about a four and a half axis passing through the center of rotation. Similarly, there is a rotatory motion for pitching. This motion is for rolling and there is a rotatory motion for pitching. In case of pitching, there is an athwart ship axis passing through the center of rotation at waterline about which the ship is pitching. So you can say that if this may be considered as the water plane area of a ship shaped vessel and this is the center of rotation. Center of rotation as you know is the centroid of the water plane area and this is the athwart ship axis. The ship is causing a pitching motion about this axis, right? I tend to tell the students like they must understand that the center of in performing the rolling through small angles the center of buoyancy is going along an arc and where is that imaginary centroid of this arc or you imagine that the center of buoyancy is going in an underwater swing then where is that imaginary swinging point that point is meta center provided the vessel is rolling through small angles of heel right up to seven degrees so if the ship is rolling up to seven degrees then the centroid of this arc of center of buoyancy is meta center same way if the ship is pitching if the ship is pitching she will make an arc which will be kind of a shallow arc right which will not be a narrow arc and where is that imaginary swinging point is longitudinal meta center we can understand this way if you talk about the formula for a box vessel then the bm transverse bm transverse means what is the distance from uh, center of buoyancy to meta center this particular distance is called bm transverse it is given by moment of inertia of water plane area about four and a half axis through the center of rotation divided by underwater volume so moment of inertia we are talking about this water plane area what is the moment of inertia of this water plane area about this axis that comes in the numerator divided by the underwater volume so we can understand it this way that if an external agency has to uh, make an effort to make the ship roll about this axis right then it depends like what is the beam because if you look at the formula and if we solve this formula for a rectangular vessel eventually you will end up with b square upon 12d so it makes a lot of difference as to what is the draft you are talking about and what is the beam you are talking about it means it means that if you are talking about this vertical distance bm and what are the factors which are affecting the height of BM or size of BM, it is, uh, it can be said that the BM is directly proportional 
to the beam square for a rectangle reversal and inversely proportional to the draft. So generally uh, in your fleet you must have seen if there are two vessels generally of uh, same draft and length etc. But one vessel has got a beam which is exceptionally high then that particular vessel will be very stiff. The GM of that vessel will be very high. That ship will be uh, kind of uncomfortable as far as the rolling etc. is concerned. Whereas the other ship whose beam is less the people will find the rolling of that ship etc very comfortable okay uh, i hope you have got an idea about the bm transverse being equal to b square upon 12d and same way bm longitudinal will be equal to l square upon 12d now why bm transverse is equal to moment of inertia about the center line divided by underwater volume the proof i will not be doing with you because if it was an extra masters class i would have done the proof uh, with them for the competency classes, the proof is not required. The application of the formula. You know, the correct application and error of the formula is more important. right? So, uh, uh, let's look at the other application of uh, the moment of inertia. And that application is uh, the relationship with the center of pressure. Let us try and understand this term, center of pressure. What is center of pressure? If we uh, consider a vessel or a tank, which is full of water and this is one of the planes that is uh, facing you now in this tank it is full of water then pressure on the walls because of water over here is going to be maximum and over here it's going to be zero if you are considering only pressure because of water it is zero over here and it is maximum over here that means if we may represent the pressure at this point by this length, the pressure at this point is zero. That means throughout from top to bottom, how much pressure at any level is there is indicated by the respective distance. Yes. So in a way, we can call this triangle as a pressure triangle. Uh, if I ask you where is the centroid of this triangle, you would say the centroid is in a position one third from the base right likewise where is center of the water pressure on this wall then please remember it is not in the middle of the tank it is one third from the base so cop is one third from the base if i talk about geometric centroid then it is halfway But if I talk about center of pressure, it is one third for the base. I'm talking about a situation when the tank is full and there is no sounding pipe, right? There is no water in the sounding pipe. If uh, you put water in the sounding pipe, it will create extra pressure. The position of center of pressure will shift upwards. At the moment, let us concentrate on this rectangular tank to understand what is the relationship between the moment of inertia and center of pressure. Center of pressure basically can be understood as center of water thrust. Basically, instead of pressure, if you understand it as what is the center of the thrust, water thrust. That is, which is that single point at which you may assume that the entire water pressure is acting. That means, if we have to support this plate against the pressure from outside water, which is that single point at which you would like to support the tank wall that is at this point because this is the center of pressure somewhere there you might have the significance of learning this particular concept the center of pressure generally is below the geometric centroid right uh, we have already learned the theorem of parallel axis i will make the thing very simple right it can be proved but the proof as i said i do with the extra masters for the competency level the application is more important and the final formula is the COP below the water level. The distance of COP below the water level COP below water level is moment of inertia of the wet plane about the water level. That means I generally know moment of inertia about geometric centroid. But I want moment of inertia about water level. Water level means a level which is always horizontal parallel to this axis. That means we are talking about moment of inertia at this level. 
I have already explained you if I have moment of inertia about this level, I can find out the moment of inertia about this level by doing plus AD square. Divide by the wet area into depth of geometric centroid below the water level. So let us take a tank whose, uh, say for example, the height is 6 meters and the width is 8 meters. Right? So what is the moment of inertia about the water level? What is the moment of inertia about the geometric centroid axis? What is the moment of inertia about an axis which is passing through the centroid and is horizontal? That is 8 into 6 cube upon 12. But I want moment of inertia not about the geometric centroid. I want the moment of inertia about water level. So plus AD square. How much is the area? 48. What is the distance from here to here? That is 3. Divide by the area that is once again 48 multiplied by depth of centroid that is 3 meters. So let us say how much you get. Uh, this will be 18 plus 8 into 8, 144 plus 432 divided by 144. So let's say it is uh, 144 plus 432 equal to divide by 144 equal to 4 meters. So depth from the water level is 4 meters. That is 2 meters from the base. Right? So you have seen that the geometric centroid is uh, halfway. That is 3 meters from the water level. Whereas the center of pressure is 4 meters below the water level that is 2 meters from the base of the tank. So this was a simple application of moment of inertia to find out center of pressure. As you know center of pressure we have never used the density. It is independent of density. If I had asked you what is the thrust that is applicable on the bulkhead or what is the pressure at any level for that I need to know what is the density. But to find out the position of center of pressure whether it is water or it is mercury does not make any difference. The position of center of pressure is independent of the density.